Hello, everyone. I'm Troy Lee, Senior Vice President of Market Intelligence and Industry Engagement here at the PCI Security Standards Council. Our mission at the PCI Council, if you're not familiar with us, is to work with industry to develop security standards and relevant education to protect payment data and assurance for integrity of payment technology as it also evolves. You know, we're living through a very disruptive time of change, a change that also sees significant growth of digital payments, whether that's contactless, e-commerce, mobile payments, and we see an expansion of the potential attack surface with more decentralized movement of payment data and a cybersecurity workforce that is already likely understaffed. And for small businesses, the greatest disruption may be these in-store closures. They're having to move quickly from only card present transactions to adopting e-commerce or possibly if they're a restaurant curbside takeout for the very first time and more reliance on third parties who themselves are trying to learn how to manage services during this pandemic, which has led to an increase in online digital skimming attacks. You may have heard of mage card attacks. This is one form of that, which continues to be a significant issue in the payment industry as third party code is compromised, then downloaded directly by a consumer, and the merchant has little to no visibility to that risk. So as such, the PCI Council provided guidance to merchants on eight critical areas where we saw were most likely points of compromise, especially for smaller organizations, and help them identify where in the environment to focus on their security. The first is to reduce where cardholder data can be found. We have an adage in the Council, if you don't need it, don't store it, and wanted to provide some information about common mistakes of unnecessary storage. This is especially important for call centers and other staff working from home or in a new environment for the very first time. We see awareness training for staff in this environment critical to help minimize risk. Also, two, use strong passwords. A common source of compromise in a majority of merchant breaches is lack of a strong password. We also encourage keeping software patched and up to date. We saw in September, over one weekend, the attack on end of life software that compromised more than 2,000 websites. And use strong cryptography or strong encryption to help eliminate the unnecessary exposure of payment data. Reduce, again, where that footprint of cardholder information may be. Use strong remote access because integrity and authenticity of all these remote connections is now even more critical. I would say multi factor authentication is becoming essentially mandatory. Ensure firewalls and other remote checkpoints are also configured properly. And think before you click. We saw in a report by Interpol this August that phishing attacks had increased by 59%. And malware associated with COVID-19 or that type of theme had increased 36%. In fact, there were tens of thousands of malware variants and malicious URLs that were created to prey on people's fears. So as they were trying to learn more about the virus or a potential vaccine, they were actually clicking links that led to uh, Trojans or other types of malicious software. And then lastly, ask third parties the appropriate questions for how to continue to manage security and integrity of handling payment data. We have several free white papers on our website for these types of questions on what you can ask a third party service provider. In fact, we have a dedicated web page for merchants that houses a library of educational payment security resources. These resources include videos and infographs. We also have resources to help merchants understand the payment security basics with payment security glossary and a document that outlines potential questions that they can again ask their payment vendors. And lastly, I encourage you to visit our COVID-19 webpage for the latest information on how to manage remote assessments and other related challenges to this pandemic, as well as subscribe to our PCI Perspectives blog to receive emails on payment security insights directly from the PCI Council. You know, we live in a very unprecedented time, but a time that can be a catalyst for change where we invest in security and new approaches that reduce both the risk and the level of effort to protect payment data through point-to-point -point encryption, tokenization, dynamic data, and many other methods. Thank you for listening. And if you're one of the hundreds of companies helping develop the standards, thank you for your support and your feedback.